Hello everyone and welcome to Newcastle upon Tyne Unitarians. My name's Diana and I'm a member of the congregation. On Sunday the 14th of February we enjoyed a discover and discuss service on Zoom, a more informal gathering in which we explored the idea of boredom through poetry, music and musings and we chatted about our own thoughts. Please enjoy this shortened version of the service where we talk about different kinds of boredom, lockdown, mental health, our own experiences and broader views of the concept, plus the downsides and even the benefits of boredom. Right, welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to start by lighting our chalice. So I want firstly to wish you a happy Valentine's Day, even though this service has nothing whatever to do with it. Um, and I also want to wish you a happy Lunar New Year. Um, we entered the year of the metal ox on Friday. Um, so I'm going to start with thoughts as I light the chalice. There we are. So on this day, may we celebrate unconditional love for families, partners, friends, and humanity. And may we celebrate the refreshment that can come with the turning of the year and a new start. Right, uh, we'll pause there. Um, does anyone have anything they would like to say in response? Please wave your hand um, and then unmute yourself. Joe, do you want to go first? If you unmute yourself and, and go ahead. Hello. I just wanted to say, I don't think Lady Dedlock's boredom had anything to do with the Industrial Revolution because she wasn't really affected by it. And probably the kind of boredom we're experiencing now is more like Lady Dedlock's boredom. And we have too much time, too much leisure, and we're living in our own heads too much and looking for distractions that only work for a certain amount of time. Thank you, Joe. Very insightful. Stephen, go ahead. Um, perhaps inevitably, I also got thinking, thinking about the, the lockdown. Um, I, I guess I was thinking about a couple of things. Um, one is that there's been a lot of talk about the lockdown affecting people's mental health. Um, and then some talk about, you know, what, what would be the long term effects of the lockdown on in, um, you know, in how people think and how we relate to each other. Um, I mean, I think of the first one of those um, first. Um, and I, th I think it's clear there have been quite a lot of um, different reasons why people have had mental health problems during the lockdown. So, for example, yeah, some people have had, got financial difficulties. Um, you know, others live in households where family relationships are difficult and so on. Um, but it's also true that, um, you know, for a lot of people, it's, it's about that combination of, um, of being by themselves and not having a lot to do that's, that's you know, cause some people a lot of a lot of difficulties. Um, I, I don't really know whether um, all this is going to have a long term effect on you know how we um, relate to each other as you know in in society and internationally and so on. I mean there's some big events I think do have that that effect, you know that, you know the First World War clearly did have an effect on people's attitude towards war in the next couple of decades, to give just one example. Um, but I think, you know, if, if this if this pandemic does, you know, reach that kind of level, then I think the effects on you know, how we relate to each other may well be quite positive. And one of the things that I, I really hope for is that, um, you know, we, we know that there are some people, a lot of them, people for whom this situation of you know being by yourself and not being able to do very much that's a pretty permanent state of affairs 
and I hope, you know, I hope we will come as a society to see, you know, that's a really bad thing that we allow, you know, so many people to live in that, um, you know, in that kind of situation on an ongoing basis. And that's that's it. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you. Has anyone else got any responses to either Joe or Stephen's thoughts or the programme? Uh, I absolutely loved the idea of um, boredom as an instigator of rebellion. Uh, I thought that was a fascinating idea, and I wonder whether anyone's actually looked into that um, from an anthropological point of view. Um, Louise, you will want to speak. Go ahead. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. I'll be interested to see uh, if in the rest of the programme they talk about the positive aspects of boredom. Uh, I often see it suggested uh, today that there's been a, there's a slight tendency now for people to want to fill their children's lives uh, with lots of things to do. And I've read quite a few articles suggesting it's actually a good idea for kids to be a bit bored sometimes because it inspires them to think about what they can do for themselves and what they want to do rather than relying on other people. Uh, I'm interested also to see if they go on for to reference one of my favourite songs, which is I Want to Be Sedated by the Ramones. We'll see. Thank you, Louise. Barry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm a troublemaker at these sort of things. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I find we, I regularly find on, on Sunday things we do tend to take ourselves a little bit too seriously. So I tend to try to bring some lightness. Uh, I was finding it quite challenging. I found this intellect, intellectual looking at boredom was really quite boring. You might have noticed that I switched off a couple of times and got up and did a couple of things. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I liked was they, they referred to Juliet, Illinois, and it took me to a different place. It took me to a place of fun because I thought of Juliet Jake and I thought of the Blues Brothers, and I remembered that wonderful film, and that cheered me up rather than hearing us intellectualizing about order. Just a thought for you. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I also quite like the, um, the idea of... Uh, is it acedia? Hmm. Um, I've never heard that term before, um, but I, I recognised it. I could relate to it. I thought that was very interesting. Um, and I, I was speaking to my mum um, last year at some point, and she said something very similar, that, that she has this period where everything sort of dips um, about halfway through the day. Um, and we speculated whether it has anything to do with sunshine or possibly blood sugar um, rather than not having anything to do. Um, we wondered whether there might be more to it um, than simply being at a loose end. Uh, and there might be some part of your circadian rhythm um, that causes you to dip and your mood to dip. Sorry, David, go ahead, speak. I think that's true. Wasn't that why the Victorians invented high tea? Because at three o'clock in the afternoon, your blood sugar levels go plummet. Yes. And so you stuff yourself full of sugary cakes. <laughs> that's exactly it, yes, because it, it was at the time, it was more traditional to eat a later meal. So there was this very long gap. Um, and yes, yeah, it does. I think it does affect your mood very much. I think it's also uh, partly about the way that humans structure their days and yeah. structure their lives. I, I find that there are like slack periods during the day where you think, well, it's not quite early enough for such and such, but it's mm -hmm. a bit too late for something else. And you're kind of like, well, what, what do I do? You know, I, I can't, I'm in between times. And it's, mm -hmm. it's about how, how humans structure their day as, as well. Right. Has anybody got any other thoughts? Louise, go ahead. Yeah. Just briefly, thinking about Lady Deadlock, I'm actually reading a book at the moment, The Way of All Flesh, um, which is a detective novel set in Victorian Edinburgh. Uh, I suppose I'm thinking of it because it makes the point that for a lot of women in particular, boredom was almost enforced at that time because there were so many things they weren't actually allowed to do. And it's clearly very... Uh, later on in uh, the last century, uh, there would be famous books written about the how actually expectations on women were quite... Simple. And one of the reasons many American housewives felt the need to resort to pills was because their lives were fulfilling them. So perhaps it's interesting to think about who gets to be bored, who wants to be bored, and uh, all the ways society affects what we can and can't do. Thank you, Louise. Lovely insights. Right, unless anyone has anything else. Brian, please go ahead. If you unmute yourself. I think boredom is a luxury. 
the, the alternative to it is to be sort of flying about all the time stressed. Um, I like being a bit bored. It gives me a chance to sort of reflect. And if I've got activities to do, I can take my time doing them. So in, in the, the 1950s, I think everybody just was uh, so tired with work that they didn't have a chance to be bored, for instance. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Yes, I definitely relate to that as well. Um, if lock, this lockdown has taught me anything, it's that um, to live a calmer life. Personally, this works for me. Uh, my life needs to have less in it, which means having more periods of a certain amount of boredom with less in it, less to do. Um, and I, I feel overall calmer. David, go ahead. I was going to say one of the ironies of this in the lockdown is the things that I originally um, found uh, relieved the boredom, I'm now bored with. It's, it's, it's just a crazy sort of part of being human, isn't it? I mean, the things you do and the things you enjoy, all of a sudden you just get, you just get sick of them. So it's an inherent part of life, boredom, I think. I'd agree with that. Right. Um, I think it's time for us to restart the program. So we'll listen to the rest of it. We'll have a little chat um, and then we'll have the notices before we end. So here we go. Second half. There. Has anyone got any responses or thoughts to share? Jean, please go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, I was just smiling at that final comment about the dust that's going to say, remember me. Well, I was just thinking, yes, because you're going to be there next week. So <laughs> I can wait for you right now. But hey, you know, you'll be back. Uh, I shan't mind. Um, in fact, after a bit, I think I might quite like you. So I, 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 I don't quite have that uh, concern about the dust. It, it's, it's a fascinating concept. I mean, I suppose the thing is, I... And I'd say this generally, I don't get bored. It, it isn't in my vocabulary. And um, so it's interesting to hear all the other discussion descriptions of it, because what people may be thinking of boredom, I'm thinking of pieces of time that are, that are pleasant or calm or whatever, or... You know, if the dust moat is floating down off the ceiling, you can be mindful enough to watch it. Uh, so I, I guess I'm perhaps I'm trying not to be frivolous, but um, it has been a very interesting discussion. And forgive me, I realised it was John McCarthy who who had been held ca captive until the final part of that discussion. I didn't realise it was the same person. So uh, in fact, I think that would have been a more interesting discussion in some ways because his contribution could be very valid. It may well be that he has contributed that in a different um, edition because he, he does an awful lot, or used to, I mean, it's finished now, but he used to do an awful lot of them and present an awful lot of them. So he may well have done a separate one that addressed yeah. that in its entirety rather than in this yeah. one. Um, but yeah. thank you, Jean. Uh, anybody else? Joe, please go ahead. Uh, two thoughts. I've probably forgotten the second one. Um, two thoughts. One is, as soon as you start thinking about life, instead of living it, you begin to see the bars. And the other thing is, quite depressing that one, and the other thought is, um, followers of Islam, um, they call the desert the Garden of Allah. Uh, that's a kind of wilderness that you can go out into to get rid of all your distractions. And it's the place where you either meet God or the devil. And so while we're playing Lady Deadlock at the moment, perhaps we either encounter God or the devil. Thank you very much, Joe. Barry? Yeah, I had a thought of what was happening, which is quite, it's a bit of it reflects what George just said. What I thought is a corruption of something you will have known. But the way I formed it was life is what happens whilst you're intellectualising about the nature of life. 
there's a, there's a little element of what Joe was saying in that. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to draw attention to the fact Louise has shared something. Do you want to say what you've shared, Louise? Um, yes, just briefly. Uh, I mentioned the Ramones anthem, Wanna Be Sedated, earlier. I put a link to an article about it in the chat. Uh, essentially, a, a punk rock anthem born from borders, the Ramones were stuck in London over Christmas at one point and had absolutely nothing to do, so they wrote a song. Uh, also, some personal resonance to me, since I was once at Leeds Festival working behind the bar, uh, Leeds is famous for being a festival it's very hard to get staff for because unless you're 19 years old and you want to listen to terrible rock music and get extremely drunk on terrible cider, there's not actually a lot to do. So that song became the anthem of the bar staff whilst we spent ages devising different card games to fend off the boredom. Yes, I, I tried to follow your link, Louise, but I, it didn't seem to be doing terribly much. And it, it threw me, it tried to throw me out of the Zoom. <laughs> so I gave up on trying to follow it. <laughs> But it looked interesting. Thank you very much, both of you. Uh, Stephen, go ahead. Sorry, I, w I will be quick. Um, yeah, I, I've also been interested to hear the uh, other people's comments and all, and just the variety of attitudes to to boredom that they they express. Um, and it seems to me maybe that. Some of the reasons why we have different experiences and attitudes are partly just about, you know, the, the amount of time that you have to spend, um, you know, not able to do very much, um, whether you whether you choose it or not, um, and what your attitude to it is. Um, and all of those, you know, in most circumstances, we have some choice over, but not uh, but some people don't have much choice, and none of us have an entirely free choice over it. That's it. Thank you, Stephen. Um, anybody else? Right, I think um, in that case, uh, oh, oh, well, yes, one thing, one thing, thank you, Ben. Um, I, one of the ways I stave off boredom is variety, I think. So although I said earlier I, I have less in my life, um, I still need to have enough uh, and I like to do things with my hands. That's one of the ways that I keep myself out of my head. As you were saying, Joe, earlier, we seem to be in our heads a lot. Um, so this is one way I've staved off boredom. Uh, this is Angus. Um, as a birthday present last year, my friend bought me um, a knitting pattern and one ball of wool. And by sheer ingenuity, I stretched this single ball of wool out to a whole cushion. <laughs> which is so tiny. Um, but yes, this is this is one of the ways that I stay off boredom. There is always knitting or sewing on the go or embroidery. Thank you. Um, and I find that being out of my head with things, doing things with my hands um, kind of fills that void, if you like. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Right. Um, I think I'm going to stop on that. Um, right. Uh, we'll finish with our final thoughts. Um, if we do experience boredom, let us welcome the tedium and face ourselves with full acceptance. And I'm now going to hand over to Ben for our final blessing. May we carry forward the best qualities of the ox into a challenging year. Reliability, honesty, kindness, determination. May we have the strength and resilience to face the challenges including the void that can open up when faced with just ourselves and little to do during lockdowns. Thank you, everyone.